Yes, he's still superhuman. Not 68 days on from his latest operation, Yokozuna Hakuho is not only back fighting, but winning brilliantly. It was so typical of the 44-time champion to spend ample time silently observing his rivals from close range last week. He could have fought them there and then, but he's been away for some time, Short Eye has gotten stronger, Takakesho is always innovating, and he wants the correct data in his supercomputer brain. But when he finally was ready, it was just as typical of him to go straight for the man who beat him last, Mitake Umi. Out went the call, down went the opponent, again and again and again. There were force outs followed by mocking grabs of the face, splendid throws, crane-like lifts which left Mitake's legs dangling. The final score, Hakuho 22, Mitake Umi 1. The Yokozuna therefore left the practice ring further convinced that he's genetically programmed to overcome injury, and, in front of reporters, keen to deliver a final insult to Mitake. Well, I could have gone on until 30 bouts. Clearly, he values Mitake's talent, wants to see him make Ozeki. But he also wants this beating to serve as a direct warning. You may have got me in July, but I'm coming for you. He didn't need to spell it out with words. His deeds alone dropped the biggest hint that he has fixed his comeback for November the 8th. I could fight today, it felt good, and it's a step forward, the legend added. But don't read too much into how many techniques I tried. Most important was the number of bouts. I was reconfirming my sumo sense, my dohyo sense, seeing how I pushed and stepped away, how I moved within that roped circle. I was conscious of all those things, and I guess the result proves that my pain is gradually fading. And he saved his best, most menacing answer for the question of whether he planned to tackle Shodai. Well, tomorrow or the day after, I suppose. But if I appear too keen to fight him, he might not come. Shodai's performance in that same session can only have left Hakuho feeling more confident. The new Ozeki tried to exert authority over giants Ichinojo and Aoyama, but finished 1-3 and three against the former, 1-5 and five against the latter. Today was a bit regrettable, he summarised. I thought they were better warmed up than me. I still would have hoped to have won a few more, though. He stressed he is not totally worn down by the new demands of being an Ozeki, but is concerned about possibly being forced to leave stable life behind. All the private rooms normally reserved for salaried wrestlers have been filled due to social distancing, he explained. So if another stablemate reaches Division 2 level, I'll be obliged to leave. And that would not only make me lonely, but be tough on my attendance too. More immediately, he claimed he would accept Hakuho's challenge, but likely after a day off to rest both mind and body. Another man unsure of himself right now is Kakuryu, who spent another morning on core exercises only at Michinoku stable. The hips that have troubled him of late are constantly weighed down by fatigue, he says. I try to take good care of them, but they still hurt. This all sounded rather like a man resigned to failure and already making excuses. Asked why he had not joined the special group sessions at the Kokugikan, despite having lobbied for them, he said, I thought they would be taking place further down the line. Instead, they came too soon for me. And his current stress levels were exposed with an unusual swipe at the Yokozuna Council for their criticisms. Look, they're not telling me anything new. I know what I've got to do, he growled. Even though we're in such difficult times, though, they're not cutting me any slack, so here I am. Personally, I feel like doing things properly and not rushing myself. Once again, though, the glaring contrast with Superman Hakuho becomes apparent. <laughs>